Okay, now, uh, Dr. Bill, you were, we were saying before, you know, I was mentioning concerning the deer antlers. Mm -hmm. oh, crap. The deer antlers almost uh, screwed up the uh, electronic equipment here for uh, intercepting our commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Morrow III, who will be calling shortly. I gotta be careful. Now, I, what I was saying, I'm, I'm so amazed at how heavy the antlers are and they have to carry two of these on their, with their neck muscles on their head. And uh, you were saying that they need heavy duty rack of antlers to put the head of the other uh, guy who wants to take over the fawn, you know, bang the fawn. Yeah. Bambi. 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 Bang Bambi? Yep. <laughs> Sounds like a more known. But yeah, I mean, no, I they bang Bambi. They fight, you know, they, they clang their, you know, I guess they, they do like sumo wrestlers, they push each other. Or those. Yeah, long, animals. Longhorn sheep or goats or whatever. Oh, those are, the, those are the antelopes in America. Mm -hmm. In the Rocky Mountains, they call them bighorn sheep. Yeah, bighorn. You know, like the Dodge Ram truck logo? Yeah, that's them. Um, you know what? i tell you one thing. The, the shillelagh was actually easier to, to lay down the, than the horns. <laughs> oh, before Bill William H. Morrow the third calls. Oh. Ah. Well, he didn't say he was going to call this early. Ah, it's 310. Is it really? Theoretically. Is this thing set properly? Oh, you got to be kidding. Why did you let that go? That may not get him off of there now. He may be on that. On the answer machine and stay on. No, nobody. Well, look out, man. Don't let it ring too. Why do you have it set like that for? Christ oh, almighty. Wow. All of a sudden, get it. Get it. Hello? Okay. Is this William H. Morrow III? Oh, boy. It is me. How about everyone? Okay. Uh, 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 is your volume s set to the max? Because uh, you sound a little low. I am. It's hard to hear you guys. Very hard. Let me just check again on the machine. Okay. Everything is as high as it will go. Yeah, uh, uh, the, um, um, uh, Sir William over here has the damn machine set to one ring. Two rings. Two rings? It rang twice? Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, uh, uh, where is your location now? Uh, did you leave te Austin, Texas, uh, oh, sir? God, yeah, yeah, I'm over in Tampa, Florida, seeing a friend of mine, an old football buddy of mine. Okay, uh, all right, that's good. You're in Tampa, Florida now. This is up. You could though, please. I mean, it sounds like you're way off in a can. I'm trying. I'm trying my best here, because you you sound low yourself. Yeah. I use the stovepipe to God. Okay, William Morrow, do you hear me? Yeah, I do. You know what? There's always there's there's always complications. You know, every time I come here to do the show. If I if I get a feeling in the back of my head that says something's gonna go wrong, it happens. It hap should happen. I'm the, same, I'm the same way. When I get a certain feeling, I go, "Oh my God, here it comes." Like the, one of the one of the cats interrupted my introduction. I I, 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 I you know she he wanted to go out, so I says, "You want to go out?" Yes. No. He turns around, and goes back. He comes by the door. His name is Steve. He, oh oh, you don't want to go out? All right. What does he do? As soon as the camera's turned on and I start the introduction, he wants to go out. Uh, no, it, it's not all because I, I'm a stickler for professionalism and, and how my how this show looks on video and it just annoys me that the introduction was interrupted. It's like well, uh things happen. Things happen. Yeah, well obviously shit does happen. Anyway, uh, the main topic what we were talking about before uh, William is um, uh, how 
American products, how the quality has declined tremendously, perhaps because it's manufactured in China with no quality control, and also customer service really sucks too. I mean, you know, I mean, overall... Well, it's not just made manufactured in China, but everything in Taiwan, Thailand, and I think I mentioned a few shows back, I got a phone call for a magazine subscription. Young lady, I said, where are you anyway? And you said, Manila. And then again, when I get some of the phone calls from some of the uh, customer service reps in this area, they're usually pretty good. So if you do some retraining, let's be honest here. So Manila and the I think Philippines. I guess that happens almost everywhere. No, but the point, the point is, myself and other people I know every time we purchase an, an American made appliance or product it always burns out uh, way before the warranty within a year within the year it burns out and it's not just one company it's many companies I'm talking about appliances could be an oscillating fan it could be a, 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 a stereo you know a boom box they it do have what is called built-in obsolescence where they build it to, to, to fail after a certain amount of time. So you will hopefully buy another one. But by the same token, would you buy another one if this one burned down so quickly? So aren't you, in essence, pushing somebody to buy one of your competitor's products, saying, man, yours only lasted a year or two. I'm going to so-and-so. See so what happens with theirs. So it doesn't really pay yeah. off. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't believe it's built in obsolescence. No, like it's it. The best you can, people will get tired of a product anyway, even if it's still working. You just want a new one. And it's just, hey, let's go back to so and so. That thing never died. Let's yeah. get another one. It's it's a form so of. How do, you a, wanna, how do you wanna look at that? How do you wanna approach that? You know, that's what it really comes down to. So that, you know, that is. Products, uh, you wanna push away your buyers, or do you wanna keep them? What's it really come down to? way of thinking it's it's a wrong way of thinking an attitude uh, that they have from the top all the way down it's you know the CEOs are making a decision they're they're short term they're being short term short term profit how much can I screw people out of now well, and short term profit never cuts it yeah long term remember when I was designing and building super tech Jimmy I always mentioned long term projections not short term yeah. remember when I said about stock I'm not running this company for the stockholders. If you don't like it, get rid of your stock. Yeah. I'm not well, a company to run. You, you believed in a 24-hour research and development department, and you believed in quality as number one. Oh, my God. Oh, everything. Even down to the, down to the, to the restaurant within the complex. I mean, the ultimate quality. But but the point it's is... It, 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 never, it, never. It's, it's very unethical... To uh, the concept of built-in obsolescence is a very sorry, unethical way to run a business. Very, you're so faint. Please try to speak up if you can. Oh, uh, <clears throat> you know what? <laughs> could be. Uh, it could. It could have to do with. Uh, that's good now. Now it, it's a little better. It now. could have to do because I'm using the pipe. It could have to do with the uh, the the fact that you're speaking wirelessly because uh, yeah. you have the you have the volume cranked up to the max. Yeah, as high as it will go. Okay, yeah, what I'm trying to say, and the, the concept of built-in obsolescence in a product is, is, is unethical. It's an unethical attitude towards, towards business. You're, 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 you're not designing, a, you're not designing and engineering a product to be as good as it can be. Well, like I said, just a few But that's the essence of, uh, product. Yeah, being a crook. How many times have we all heard a friend of ours or a friend of say, Growth. I'll never get so-and-so product. And buy another product. That thing was a piece of junk. Think but, after but, one year. So you're losing it's a, not, another it's customer. Still, like I said, it's not ethical. You want customers to return to keep coming Built back to your product or your product line. And you're not going to do that with things failing. You need quality products. That's what people want. How many times will people not go back to a restaurant if they get food poisoning? Or if it's cold, or if the service is horrible, though, I'll never come here again. Well, it's the same thing, basically. It really is. Same application. You know, it's, uh, well, it, it is the same thing. It was a, a, a restaurant has a kitchen. The kitchen is your product assembly line, per se. So, if it's bad, they won't come back. Right. Or it's like, you've, egg. Got, you've got to kiss the customers, you know what. Give them what they 
they're paying for. And if you're not, they will go somewhere else. Yes. If there is not, you know, if, if there is, is not the price to know. If there is a somewhere else, if, well. if the company doesn't have a monopoly, you know, there is a somewhere else. Um, well, they're always just Apple thought they had a monopoly, but now they're getting a little bit kicked in the butt by Samsung. Good. With their Galaxy, uh, I think it's the S4, I believe, what have you. And there will be others coming out too, so. Now you see what happened with Apple, well, what you just said, they're, they they have become what they were bitching and moaning about with Microsoft. They have turned into the same... Uh, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you real quick. You just reminded me of something. Speak up also to me, Mr. Fate. Oh, the man. question is, to everybody listening, how do you build customer loyalty? Think about that. By building a bad product? Opening up a Walmart. So. How do you build customer loyalty? What is brand satisfaction? You see? Mm -hmm. It's got to be good. Yeah. I've in the past. I think we all have bought something from a so-and-so company. It didn't last long. I, I, I said, I'll never buy their product again. And uh, I haven't. I have not. I my mean, first microwave oven I bought was a little over $600 back in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And this thing just broke and broke and broke. And this, this company, I will never buy one of their products again. I just, this is ridiculous. So, I had the same experience with Chrysler and Fords, you know? Well, we, I think we all did, and a lot of people did. Nobody's laughing at Ford anymore. No. Nobody's laughing at Chrysler anymore. The quality is all sky high in American cars nowadays. It's pretty... It's pretty Good, well, right? they had no choice. They had no well, choice in the matter. Well, why did they come complace, become complacent in the first place and the quality go down? Greed? There was no excuse for that. I know. I, there, uh, there was no excuse for that. You know, what's your pride? You know, don't you take pride in your product? All the workers, the union workers or whatever, take pride in what they're assembling. And, uh, you know, where is it? And they should, they should be able to afford to buy the very product that they're assembling, too. Well, they are. They get great discounts. I mean, a GM employee gets a great huge discount when he buys a GM Second floor of capitalism. Employee. And it works on all the Not being able to afford to buy the product and again. through other industries as because well. Because of low wages. What have you. So. Yeah, I mean, there's no better testimony than, than having an employee drive the very car that they are assembling. I well, mean, that's... You a, also wonder how politics plays into that too. Yeah. If so and so, Joe Smith, an assemblyman, would send an order for a car, you don't think word is passed throughout the entire assembly line is one of our own. Let's make it good for this guy. So, am I right or wrong? What do you think? Yeah, you're right. They might just say, hey, this is one of our guys, boys, a union member. Come on, make him a good one. Yeah. No mistakes here, fellas, or gals, or what have you, but, uh, I, I'm sure politics goes on as usual there. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, getting I back to, getting back to... What, what I heard of where I used to live in Richmond, New Jersey, one of our auto dealerships there was a Lincoln Mercury dealer. Yeah. And this, and this just never made sense to me. They said, Billy, some of the cars we get you, how do they get off the assembly line? They got brand new, beautiful Lincoln Continentals. Front seats had leather. Rear seats had cloth. Now you tell me how I got by, by the, the end of the supervisor. Yeah, uh, right. This baffles me. I mean, here you have two different materials. Front and rear seats. Uh, so God knows what's going on under the hood with the engine. You know? Yeah. Well, um, I also, uh, getting back to built-in obsolescence, which please is... Up, uh, please, please speak up, I'm sorry to Yeah, yeah, you too, you too. Yeah, uh, uh, getting back to built-in obsolescence, um, there, there's these companies like, let's say it could be a company uh, like uh, that makes uh, air purifiers and vacuum cleaners that arranges it so you have to continue to buy their filter or their bag continuously. Well, this is why, Jimmy, now you're seeing no filters to buy. It's a reusable lifetime filter now you're seeing. A lot of that around. Right, you could the public or the, or the buyer want. You can clean tired of buying filters. You can clean it uh, your the other one is the you know, like I shouldn't mention companies, but like Oric. It gives you that lifetime filter, you can just rinse it off, put it back in. 
Uh, it's a wonderful air purifier. Uh, smart move. Yes, you're going to make money, more money as a company. The people coming back for more filters. But the people get fed up with that. They're tired of it. So maybe you pay a little more for a great quality product. You never ever have to buy another filter again. Hey, uh, air conditioned filters. Uh, 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 the, in the old days, you, you couldn't wash them, right? They were not washable? Well, they were so thin of a membrane that got dirty. If you try to wash it, it would rip. Uh, yeah. They're a little stronger now, but then you see the other companies now, they're reusable. They're strong plastic. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's what I mean. They're reusable. They're, they're, they're yeah, wa they're, you could rinse them under, under, that's you can rinse them under a, a, a faucet, a kitchen that's faucet. What people want. Because in the past, too, I'll give you another example. Years ago, this is back in the, uh, a long time ago, late 70s, early 80s. I bought an air purifier. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take your man as an as 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 uh, interviewer, but well, I can't do it. Well, you could not find the filters anywhere. I called the company, they couldn't even tell me who their uh, suppliers were. I said, this is ridiculous. You know, I bought your product, but I can't use it because I don't have any filters for the thing. So, but if it's reusable, damn. Like you said, Jimmy, rinse it under the water, pop it back in, turn it back on. There yeah, you go. right. And, and, not, and not be subject to, I refuse to buy any appliance where I have to continue for, as long as I have that appliance, continue to order parts, filters, whatever, from the company. I mean, to me, that's a racket. Well, it is a racket. That's why you want things to clean yourself quickly. You know, uh... That's the uh, way to go. Your good companies will, like I mentioned earlier, Auric. Uh, great product. Auric is good. Uh, Di how's Dyson? I, I see a lot of Dyson commercials. Dyson's not, it's not as good as I don't believe is advertised compared to a shark. Okay. Uh, they're overpriced. Right. That's what I believe. I have a I have a Bissell. I have a Bissell. I have a Bissell that I'm very happy with. This has been around a long, long yeah. time. No, no bag required. The suction power is so powerful. Yeah. It really is. With no bag required, it's bagless. It has a HEPA filter in it. You know, but that see that's what I mean. A company who puts quality as number one. And doesn't just say it on, on a commercial, but really well, does Shark it. Do, Shark does claim it all the time on their infomercials. You've got their CEO, he's in their infomercials. Everybody else yeah. goes to, you look at the rankings, the ratings. They're better than what their infomercials claim. Right. They oh. are that good. Yeah. And uh, that's what you want. Yes. Now, now, William, you have something. you have something very special to say about newsletters censored. In a few minutes, yeah, I want to talk a little more. We'll yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, just you know, stand behind your product. It's uh, it's not hard to do. It, you know, it's really it's very simple. It's being cheap and not caring about the public. And as you discussed earlier, short term versus long term. Hey, we're making big bucks right now. Yeah, but down the line, long term, you're gonna lose that money. The people will not rebuy your product. Bite. And that's not what you want. You've got to make it a quality product. You've got to deliver what you say in your advertising. Yes. In fact, you even go beyond that. And I think you're seeing more and more of that now with the, uh, the warranties or what have you. Remember, I think it was the, uh, oh God. I think it was the, the Koreans with Kia and uh, Hyundai, where they were the first, I think, to offer 10 years 100,000 mile warranty. That was unheard of. Remember we used to give the car? Yeah. 12,000 mile warranty. 12,000 for 100,000? I mean, it just takes one little kick in the butt from a competitor. And everybody seems to wake up real fast, don't they? Absolutely. Uh oh, these guys need business. They must have something. Yeah, but when they think short term like that, Billy, it always ends up biting them on the ass. Give me the bottom line of business. Short term never works. Yeah. All right. But real quick, I want to tell your listeners too that the best way to join your Reverend Bill's organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com. You get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. 
We're living in end times, people. So you need newsletter censored. Learn, people. You have rights. Use them. So that's yes. And, and, and definitely learn that you do not have to vote within the two-party system. No, you don't. Uh, but in essence, if you don't, the way the system is, you're kind of, you, in essence, you really are wasting a vote. Because how many people will go your way anyway if you write in right. now? Some you're going to have write-in votes because the third party will the Right. <laughs> Well, they, they also, Billy, they also, uh, the, the U.S. media never gives face time to the independent candidates. No, they don't. They don't. It was an uphill battle for all, anybody on the Supreme Party system. The only third party candidate that had half a chance was H. Ross Perot back uh, when he was, uh, oh God, how many years ago was that? I'm sorry, I apologize. But no, how many I years ago was that? 90s? That was the only time you really saw a third party candidate really, truly involved. And I'll be honest, he was the only one of the three candidates that made sense. Hey, uh, Jesse Ventura did it when he when he became governor of Minnesota. He he ran a very low budget campaign. Well, he ran a low budget campaign, but the bottom line is the man made sense as well. Yeah. He's no fool. So. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Uh, give the man credit. Give he, the man credit. I mean, here's the guy. He's very intelligent. He's a former Navy SEAL, former pro wrestler, yeah. uh, governor. I he's a man that cares. He does care deeply about this country. Yeah. And he doesn't like a lot of what he sees. No, you no. Know, so. But he's, uh, he, um, he ran uh, as an indep well, he ran under the Reform Party, just like Ross Perot did. Uh, but yeah. he, now he, if, if he decides to run in, in 2016, he is not running under any party because he feels if you, once you run under a party, then you owe people favors. Yeah, you won't be what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Oh, once you... Jesse Ventura says if, if he runs... That part, I heard once you run under a third oh, party, uh, what? Let me get the stove... Let me get the stovepipe. Okay, I'm using the stovepipe to God. Okay, Jesse Ventura, if he decides to run for president in 2016, in 2016, he will run under no party, zero party, because once you run under a party, then you have uh, campaign contributions and then you owe people favors. Well, you do, but so you're saying those who run as an independent. Yeah, well... It, so he'll still get independent contributions anyway. Well, so yeah. How those owing favors will matter, but along the same line, in essence, you had your ones this past couple of years too with Ron Paul and I forget who else. I thought I could name them all. I could. I mean, I can't remember them all. But, uh, yeah. Well, they. I wonder the, what the answer is. The, the politician has to. Out. Huh? The answer is getting money out. Money. Out of politics. Oh, getting money out of politics is is removing corruption from politics. Well, you wonder. Well, yeah, well, money, money is what corrupts. Go. I mean, look how they got Al Capone. I mean, they couldn't get him on all the murders and everything. The lives he ruined, they get him a little simple tax evasion. So, politics is usual. Well, yeah, look, they, look at like Martha Stewart was uh, put in federal prison for a lousy $40,000, right? That was wrong. They were using her to set an example. Yep. She is not a nice person from what I hear. Nope. But don't use somebody to set an example. That was wrong. Yeah. The same with O.J. Simpson. I think we all believe or know that he is probably guilty. But this last thing they got him on really was total bull. Walking in to get his own stuff back in the amount of years he got. He got he's getting more years than most killer murderers get a lot of them. And this is wrong. Don't use the public or the people as an example. Set an example. I mean, it's like the basic things like in our legal system. Okay, a cop could really get anybody for anything driving down the road, depending how hard you want to look. So don't use things as an example. And like I said, OJ Simpson, yes, he's a jerk. Yeah. What he did, and the and the, tr and the judges I mean, always side with the cop. Honest, <laughs> the last thing he did was no big deal. People, come on.
come on now. You know, in honesty, it was no big deal. So. Uh, you see the you see the new commercial they have now. If if somebody is driving uh, under the influence of a prescription drug they could be arrested just like a drunk driver I mean they're looking for more revenue it looks like well I, I assume they are looking for more revenue but if you are under the influence of a prescription drug I think you get warnings on your little pillboxes or whatever that say do not operate every machine or your bomb but don't yes, drive you under do. this can cause drowning you if right. you were forewarned you abuse it now you pay the consequences yeah. hey, with it with us with us booze fellas or a prescription drug they still could kill somebody you ram into them head on or go down the wrong way on the highway or something yeah. Who knows? it's still the wrong way well it's the wrong thing to do you're right when you get a, a, f a pharmaceutical the uh, pharmacist gives you all the detail on they paper give you every fair warning and side right effect. now if people are too lazy to read it Hey, well, that's their problem. We can't walk you home, Jimmy, and hold your hand and say, please read this. You know, the people have to do so, like you just said. They don't. I think a lot of people probably don't even glance at those sheets. And then they go out and something bad happens. Yeah. Well, the, law, so, the, whole, the whole lawsuit subject is way out of hand, too. There's so many frivolous lawsuits. Like, oh, my God. Like this, yeah. this stupid sexual harassment bullshit. Uh, a, a man cannot ask a female co-worker out on a date, you know, he could lose his job for that? Come on. That's wrong. We, we talked about this weeks back, I think we did. Yeah. You can't even compliment a lady anymore. I mean, if you see a co-worker or somebody, say, you, really, you look really beautiful in that dress. That's sexual harassment. Yeah. To me, to me personally, that's a compliment. That's not harassment. I'm not trying to pick you up or I'm just saying, you really look beautiful. You really do. Right. Am, am I so bad for complimenting you? Would you like it better if I said, you look absolutely hideous? Right. And is that legal? Right. I mean, now, where do we weigh the negative and the positives? Where is sexual harassment? Where is a compliment? I mean, where do we draw this line? I mean, what you if you can't open your mouth anymore? What if, what if the guy, what if the the man did ask the female coworker out on a date? All she has to say is no. Say no, and that's the end. And of that's it. the end of it's it. That's simple. I mean, their point. You can't ask somebody out. Yeah. I don't know where we're headed. I mean, uh, everybody. We're headed on the right lane. Everybody is so damn thin-skinned today. I mean, it, you can talk Thin about... Thin-skinned, scared, and uh, just plain nervous wrecks. You can't open your mouth anymore. And it's just wrong. Yeah, I mean... Uh, they're out, they're, sadly, they're taking all the, quote, fun out of life. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to mention any names because it'll cause a lot of trouble, but the gentleman that we took under our wing, you know, he was so deathly afraid of offending anybody. That you know, yep. we we couldn't talk about yeah. politics. We couldn't talk about the Catholic Church. We couldn't talk about anything. 